Anne Marie Watson, Mary Medinsky, Brent Galloway, and Bev McCrosty. So, um, yes, do you want to start with uh, you, Meg, and then we'll work our way? Yes. Can you use the screen? You can use the screen. We'll fire it up. Okay, go ahead. Hey, um, so I teach art history here at Freddy College, and I use Twitter in the classroom. Um, for the most part, that would be most of what I'm talking about. Um, generally speaking, I have I did not have a Twitter account until I got my contact with a teacher, and I specifically signed up for Twitter to use it as an instructor. And so that has set the tone for how I use it. Um, it's sort of a little personal, but mostly business. Um, with some personal thoughts in there, but nothing deeply personal because this is my Facebook page, which I do not share with students. Um, I use it in the classroom sometimes in a way to allow students to have a hashtag for the class. So if they want to talk about something amongst themselves, but not in the classroom setting, they can do that online. Um, I also, so they can contact me if RDC email is not working, Blackboard isn't working. There's now this third way that they can contact me, and it's really, really great outside of the classroom if they graduate because if they're active users on Twitter, they check up later and they're like, hey, I got into this degree program, and that's really fantastic to be doing. In the classroom, this term I have changed without using it, and uh, yeah, it's a uh, print media, but using it. Hard act to follow. <laughs> uh, I'm Anne Marie Watson. I work in the library. Um, I am a librarian, but I work right now as the uh, marketing and communications coordinator. And um, one of my primary responsibilities is the library social media presence, um, although I do have help with that. I'm Mary. Um, so uh, I, I run the library social media accounts, but then personally, I have my own account as well. Um, and uh, I use it. For all facets of my life, so I talk about my work as a librarian. Um, I talk about marketing stuff. I'm also a trustee with Richard Catholic Schools, so I talk about education stuff. I'm on the University of Alberta Senate, so I talk about post-secondary education stuff. And I'm an active community volunteer, so I talk about stuff going on in our community. Um, I don't really use it for networking. Uh, I use it for engagement. I use it as a way to engage with the community or various communities. Um, I use it for news gathering. I use it to find out what's going on in the community. Um, I use it for eavesdropping <laughs> and finding out what's, what's being said out there, what opinions are. Um, although, yet, you can, you often you only hear one voice on Twitter, so you have to kind of be balanced um, in where you're getting your information. Um, and I use it also to put out information to um, let people know. You know what the library is doing, what I'm doing as a trustee, what our schools are doing, what University of Alberta is involved with, that kind of thing. Cool. I'm Mary Medinsky. Uh, I'm a librarian as well, but I work as the public services coordinator in the library and I teach part time, um, computer 261. I use Twitter a lot, uh, both in my work in the library, um, at our DP library, but also personally. Um, I use it for networking and engagement. I use a lot in my research in current awareness. So I think we'll probably, a lot of us will be talking about our, um, our uh, professional learning networks. Um, and then really for being honest, I use it to raise my profile in my field. Um, I, Canadian Library Lab is small. And uh, thanks to Twitter, I've actually been invited to do all kinds of really, really cool things because people know me from the internet. Um, I use it a lot in our community as well, in my year. Um, and because of that, I've had opportunities to work with local businesses like Trouble Monk and Bra Lounge. And what I would say if you're not on Twitter, you should definitely uh, get some. So hopefully, you get something um, out of our panel today. I'm Jen and I teach in the Faculty of Education, and I've been a twit, Twitter <laughs> for probably five years, and I use it very much as a learning tool and as a research tool, um, both for myself as an instructor, but also for my, uh, my own doctoral work. Um, and I, I, I'm, I probably consider myself a PD junkie. I am always going to sessions and workshops and lots of reading, but 
I honestly have to say that Twitter is probably the best form of PT that I've ever experienced. Um, the fact that it's free is great. Um, so I use it for my own um, scholarly work. And I'm pretty active on Twitter in terms of sending out tweets or retweeting from other um, educators. Uh, I use it a great deal in my classes. So I will have, um, last week I had an exit card that I instructed on Google Forms and just tweeted it out. And students will put their presentations on Twitter and um, I will take photos of students working. So, um, and I can show you later that uh, a couple of weeks ago we did a learning about lesson planning and had to do this kind of a lesson plan scramble. And I took a photo of it and put it on Twitter so the students can use that as a resource later. Uh, I use it for promotional purposes as well for our students. So, uh, last Last week we had exit interviews for our students, and I took some photos of that. Thank the school division who came in to support that. Tweeted that out. Um, students use it quite a bit as well in classes, uh, especially in third and fourth year. Uh, we use it to support each other if we're doing projects. Uh, people find a certain tweet, they'll uh, retweet it and tag a student so they don't have access to it. And students will message each other through Twitter, but it, it's just one form of social media. Uh, what I tell our students that in terms of developing 21st century learning skills, um, as teachers, they have to model that. And so I, I tell them that in education, you have to have an online digital presence, uh, but it has to be a positive and professional one. It's pretty easy to have an online presence, but in many fields, it has to be professional. So um, part of it is develop, having the students develop their own professional learning network. And Twitter is one of those great places to start. So I absolutely love Twitter. Thank you so much. Ben McCroskey, I've been using Twitter since 
that social media plus each person that that takes care of that. And so I think it was seeing that sort of ramp up to them understanding and using and keeping it professional. Uh, this morning I scooped up a link that was um, that I'll use for discussion posting in an organizational behavior class so that I don't always go in. I sometimes I'll go do roles where you know, months go by and I don't post anything and all of a sudden I'm mad that they didn't post them. Not the best example of how to treat Thank you. So just throw a question out to the panelists. Um, some of you tweet personally, some of you tweet for work or for both. Um, how do you balance tweeting professionally and personally, especially if you're using the same Twitter account for that? Would like to start with that. Here. Good question. Um, <laughs> so I struggle with this quite a bit, um, and have often thought, "Geez, I wish at the beginning I had had two separate spheres." However, um, doing a little bit more research and talking with more people in the in my field, which is librarianship, um, people respond well to knowing the whole person. So yeah, I do tweet. This morning, I tweeted that Shania Twain should thank Taylor Swift. Um, but yesterday I tweeted about the gold standard. So I think people like what I found and I have pretty good engagement on my Twitter. What I found is that people like the personal tweets. Um, I don't go, I like I, somebody on Twitter that we follow, Brenda Sargent, she's awesome. She was talking about how it's your highlight reel. So yeah, I do tweet per personally, but I don't lament. I don't, um, I don't TMI on Twitter. Uh, I share the highlight reel on my personal life and then tweet quite a bit about work or politics or the things that are interesting to me. And, and it gives people who maybe aren't librarians a reason to follow me. It gives people that aren't community members and are librarians a reason to follow me. It gives businesses a reason to follow me. And I think the more diverse your content, the more chances of really growing your base are as long as you balance things and uh, and don't annoy the heck out of people. So then they'll unfollow you. <laughs> I use uh primarily for professional reasons, unless it's an election. <laughs> um, I've actually thought of having another Twitter account. Just, that's personal, whatever. I get passionate about current events as well. So sometimes I think, and I better put that someplace else. Mm -hmm. uh, I use Facebook primarily for personal reasons. So that's kind of how I shift the two. Twitter is my professional place, and Facebook is my personal place. Uh, LinkedIn I use for professional <coughs> reasons, and blogging I use for professional reasons. But Facebook is kind of that other stuff. Okay. Sometimes I get a little political. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I use TweetDeck to manage my social media. So I have a LinkedIn, a Twitter, on Facebook and blog, and because when you're using something like TweetDeck or Hootsuite, it uh, will scoop up. So for Twitter, 140 characters, for the others, you know, depending on the size, and it pushes it out. I guess it was, um, I use it in the beginning Twitter, but then it calls for more of a, a professional. But since then, since not always blogging all the time, I, um, I found that I it will be at events. It will just be whatever I'm at. So this morning, it ha I was logged though into the sales tip club. So it depends on which one I've got logged in at the time. And so I'm, I'm kind of a scattered person about that I tweet about. So I tweeted about coming here and participating in this panel, but it was in the sales tip one, not in the Ben McCossie. So they all, oh, it's who's ever following and, and it's always of interest. I think I agree with, with uh, what you're both saying about. I think they need to see who we are. And see, I'm scattered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the use of hashtags is nice because mm -hmm. that kind of narrows it. Uh, so, a hashtag is, is something that helps narrow a search. So, I use hashtags for each of my three classes. So, if the students want to see what's going on in my class, they'll just search for that hashtag. And just those tweets come up. So that's that's kind of nice that they don't have to get all of it, just what's important for them. 
The only thing I'd add to that um, question is no matter how you're using it for personal or professional reasons, we're all employees of RDC and RDC does have a social media policy and we should all be aware of what that says and you might be surprised at what's in there. Um, so I would encourage everyone to check that out if you're active on any social media platform. Okay. And we'll send out a link to the policy uh, after this session. So do you have something to add as well? Um, it's sort of the same, but because I focus so much on, on student interaction with mm -hmm. the, um, my Twitter account, colleagues as well, but um, mostly students during the school year, uh, I thought that because in classrooms it's often very difficult for students to really understand who their instructor is, they, they get what I present to them for the three hours that they have in the week. Um, and I don't talk about myself in class because that's not on the test. So I thought keeping it positive and mm -hmm. still professional, but maybe a little bit like yesterday I tweeted about how it was not right, the not, not the right day to wear the one out boots with holes in the soles. That sort of thing. It's not deeply personal, but it's not going to, I'm not going to have my identity stolen, but they'll be like, oh, I mm -hmm. learn things about their instructor mm -hmm. as exactly a human being. Human aspect. He needs to buy new shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Students start a fun now. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Let's throw it out to um, the uh, participants in the audience. But do you have questions for the panelists? Second year of history class, instead of doing a regular lecture, um, we're doing a seven week unit of role playing of a particular year in France, and they have to be the content rather than learn the content. And in Paris, at that point in time, the art community used the newspaper to snark at each other from day to day. Um, a show would go up, and the next day, the critics would have one liners, full of one liners about that show. And um, Paris, 1889, had different rules as far as what was polite and funny than we do now. And so I encourage, especially the critics in the classroom, to use Twitter. We have a specific hashtag for the class and to start a conversation. So the artists were talking back to the critics. And um, so I follow what Brent does and just retweet anything that comes out of that class. That isn't part of the marks. And some students are not comfortable with using Twitter. They're against the social media, anything like that. And that's fine. It's not for everyone, just like the newspaper wasn't for everyone in 1989. And so I just, and instead of using anything else, I said, this is open to the public. Anyone can see these tweets just like anyone can read a newspaper. This is the 1800s version of a newspaper, except it's not the turn of the century. So tying that in, um, they change, some of them have changed their bios, they completely set them up as their character. Others are saying, don't be concerned, I'm a dead white guy for the next six weeks. Um, <laughs> stuff like that. So there has been some engagement across that. And outside of class, they'll find something and poke each other with it about how that art is bad or that art is good. And now that they're setting up their exhibition, um, they are now using Skype. I saw two characters who were great friends in real life. Um, back in the 1800s, set up a Skype contact that was like, oh my goodness, this is so fast. <laughs> What's the hash? Okay. Mm -hmm. The hash is RDC or History 2. Art History 2. I have to change my tweet. I'm over by four. And it's so <laughs> fun. Like, I've been following Megan and her class working together, and the tweets from these students are just awesome. Like, they are taking it to heart. They, there's tons of buy in, you can really tell. And I think it's just so fantastic. They're, they're having a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, didn't have to remind them that you know it might be the character might be awful, um, but it is 21st century, so try to be human as much as possible and don't say oh my god, but you wouldn't say it to them in class. So, um, because there was there was getting a tone, but some of those people back in 1800s were, were really unpleasant to be. So <laughs> watch the line, guys. Cool. What a great way to you know blend that past with present technology. Yes. Um, I use it as well. What I like about Twitter is, in terms of higher order thinking, it is a, a great activity in synthesizing. 
because you have to be able to synthesize your thoughts into 141 characters. And that's hard to do. Um, but it's a good learning activity for students to be able to put most important things in a very short sentence. Um, I use it in terms of study um, uh, at risk learners. And there's so much information about that that. You know, we can't all learn everything about each kind of at-risk learner. So I have them work collaboratively uh, to kind of do mini research on a topic. And then they have to synthesize one fact, share it with the whole educational community. And then they have to make, so that's one tweet, and then they have to tweet uh, what they will do as teachers in the that. So, it's, it's just an activity called two tweets, and uh, it's, it's you know, I mean, you don't need to mark, it's just one of the things you do in class. Uh, but I have used uh, Twitter for an exit card as well. Mm -hmm. Tweets are learning out to me in 141 characters. And, uh, but I find, as Deb said, that today's students are really, they're not using social media for learning, they're using it for socializing, taking lots of pictures. Um, so very rarely uh, they're not blogging. They are on Twitter, but not for educational reasons. Um, so I, I will tell them to say, well, as, as future teachers, knowing that you know, there's grade one students who are, you know, who are being taught how to blog and are on Google Chromebooks doing all this kind of stuff, how does that make you feel? He said, because if those kids are already doing this the way they learn pretty fast. So, you know, it's there's so many different social media tools out there and they they need to embrace it as a form of learning, not just as entertainment. Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of what I try to get across. For the one that we did with the RDC sales study, because I had the password and control to set up, they would um, they would be typing in the just re uh, reinforcing some things like uh, spell correctly, uh, make sure it it's uh, it's not all in lowercase to so using professional tone. We looked at um, who we were following and who was interested in following us. We talked about about that about the whole sort of following. What, what would you want to look at? And then also talking how to use Bitly because of that, that kind of, although I don't think it's this fussy now with the, with the links, the counting those as characters as it was originally. Yeah, but again, teaching them how Bitly that would cut back a lot of long, long links that they're trying to send to people. So I think there were a number of, of side goals on top of them uh, giving the presentation and using technology for it. Now, did they go away and set up their own Twitter accounts? That was one thing I didn't follow up with. So what would we be laughing at? But certainly in this setting, it was teaching them how to, to tweet professionally and come up with engaging ideas because again, we're looking for in sales, you're looking for the hook, you're looking for what interests people. So this again, you know, are we putting stuff out there that makes people want to follow us? So using that as a, a real business tool. So in the library, the tweets are a little bit different where they're not to a, a class per se. What are some different ways that um, you guys engage students using the library? Um, our content's varied mm -hmm. because both of us do it and, and sometimes other staff um, participate as well, but primarily it's the two of us. Um, and I think that makes it more interesting that it's not just the same kind of content all the time. Um, mm -hmm. So we're tweeting um, the typical content you might expect about our services and what you can do in the library, what we offer. Um, but then we have engaging posts of students working in the library or on display or ask a question or just share something fun like a library themed Valentine tweet, for example. So it's, it's a whole variety of things, and um, I think that really drives the success of our, the library Twitter account. Um, it is successful. It does get a lot of engagement from students. It gets, it gets
it's engagement from other libraries as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah. we're really we really care about our students. And we're really mindful of the kind of content that we post. So we the library has Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and then actually we're going to be starting Snapchat. And so we're really mindful that the content that we're posting matches the medium that we're posting it to. Mm -hmm. um, what we're very aware of is we want followers on all of our platforms. So we don't cross post very often. So if we're posting something on Instagram, that's for Instagram. If we're posting something on Facebook, that's for Facebook. If we're posting something for Twitter, that's for Twitter. Mm -hmm. So we give people incentive to follow us on like, across the our platforms. And we know because we work with our analytics, we know the content that thrives on Twitter, we know the content that thrives on Facebook, we know the content that crap that drives on Instagram. And we're mindful to try to, you know, keep our engagement as high as mm -hmm. possible. For sure. Thank you. Other questions? What's your most successful set of tweets? What do people really want to know about you or from you? Oh, Mary's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, snarky political tweets do yeah. amazingly well. So if you can be funny, if you can be not offensive and you can use the right hashtag, you can do very, very well on Twitter. And, um, and participating in, uh, for example, elections, and so the AB like hashtag. Um, over the course of the spring election, I picked up about 500 followers. So if you are constantly tweeting content that's interesting, and for me, I, draw, I did well with Snark, um, people get used to your brand, because it is your brand. We all have an opportunity to create a product, and the Mary Medinsky product is, that's what she does, and people have come to expect that, and yeah. Semi-snarky. <laughs> Semi-snarky. I was just checking to see if I could tell which one of my tweets is people like to tweet it the most, but I don't know if I can actually check that. But, Are there tools? Yeah. 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 That will give you the analytics of your tweets. Yeah. 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 What's your favorite analytics tool? Uh, Twitter. Twitter's native analytics. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 No, just yeah. no. I don't. I just use Twitter yeah. analytics. Yeah. Um, I I use Hootsuite as well. We use it in the library, and I have my personal stuff on there. I don't find their analytics all that good. Actually, right. mm -hmm. um, the Twitter native analytics is. That's fine. I'm just wondering, in terms of our audience participants, how many of you use Twitter? Yeah, a few of you. Yeah. I'm tweeting this. <laughs> <laughs> so, what different purposes uh, do you primarily use Twitter for? If you do, is it more like just personally, or would you say it's you know for PD networking? Like, what are some of the different things? Mine is PD. I like going, I don't push out a lot of tweets. I don't tweet myself too much. Mm -hmm. But I like that I have some followers that I like following and seeing what they're what they're finding and what they're posting. So for me, I use it in that regard more so. Okay. Mm -hmm. What's your handle, Jen? I can't remember. Jen Tom's 39. Oh, 39. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. There's a lot of Jennifer Thomases up there. <laughs> and we will compile all of the uh, the handles and, oh, and send them out. Yeah, along with the uh, tweets at the end. We also have a list which led us to realize how many people are on Twitter. Um, but on our CTL site, then I have to figure out how to do it. Do I have to be logged in? Well, whatever. We have a faculty list. Oh, the list. Is it on the well, side? It lists the six lists. I usually do it through mobile, so I'm not actually as good with the. Where am I going? Um, just the, the menu bar is sort of right below the picture. Right below the picture, yeah. There's the number for you. Yeah, perfect. Except oh, I have to sign in and I don't have the password with me. So anyways, we do have a list of faculty, RDC faculty tweeters. So. Sorry, were you, did we cut you off? No, okay, good. No. <laughs> <laughs> Any other? Um, what, what do you tweet? I just I don't tweet much very lately. So do you use I it more see. along the same lines? I as Jen? yeah, I started to use it just to follow people, um, and 
Yeah, and I won't admit who the first person I followed on Twitter was, but I, I know long who was the former prime minister of Canada. Um, but I use it mainly to get news and information. It's the quickest way to get into reading newspapers and that sort of thing. Uh, so I use it to collect content for, for classes and uh, that sort of thing. And um, yeah, and following Mary takes up a lot of time. <laughs> there are a lot of tweets. <laughs> what I like about Chris says is every so often, a student will engage with her outside of the classroom like so they you can tell they were having some kind of browsing conversation in class and then a student will like tweet a news article that they're related to what it was that they were talking about yeah. which like what a great way to in, like, encourage lifelong learning and critical thinking and you know thinking about beyond the right. four walls of our of our place. Like I, I like that a yeah, lot. and that and there's the other student that, that does that now as opposed to just sending just me the link mm -hmm. and and so I, I like how other people can, can get a, a hold of that. I like that way. Yeah. The students are so engaged. It's not about the class, it's about the learning. Mm -hmm. And they'll find something that I'm gonna share this with them in class or, or start to build you know their own professional learning network. And really and, such a fantastic way to learn collectively and share with them. It's great. Anyone else wants to? Know? I'm more of a follower at this point. Okay, sure. Yeah. <coughs> I don't use it at all. I was just curious to see how people were using it. Okay. And then invited me to come along with her. Oh, very nice. <laughs> so I haven't done much PD stuff on main campus this year. So. So I have a question. Uh, other than Mary, who is your favorite tweeter to follow? <laughs> oh, <laughs> You're going to get a lot of more followers out of this. <laughs> we all pull out. We all pull out. It's probably a button. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know the buttons. Stuff. Um, I like Ian Jukes. He's big on digital learning. Okay, because we'll send out a list. Yeah, okay. Uh, you, yeah, I really like him. You know, Could be anything. There's so many people. I like the tattooed prof. I like shit academics say. I like shit academics say too. <laughs> <laughs> We almost tried to call that the title of this panel, but I'm not sure how well that would work. I like um, Stephen Laterante. He um, used to work for the Golden Mail, and now he works for Twitter Canada and government politics. So not only does he tweet lots of interesting things, he retweets lots of Canadian mm -hmm. content, and um, it's it's fun, it's interesting, and it's a really great way to see who else I should maybe be following mm -hmm. in this world. Yeah, I don't know. That's really hard because it depends on the subject matter. Because yeah. I'm interested, right? We're all interested in so many different things. Right. Um, I think lately I've been following a lot of news. Um, so I love Rosie Barton from the CBC and CBC Power on Politics and a lot of those commentators I've been engaging with. That just comes to mind. There's a lot of local people, but not necessarily local celebrities um, or not necessarily local politicians or as local people, but just um, Twitter celebrities, <laughs> other than Mary, <laughs> um, there's lots of great local people. I have three favorites, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, obviously, other than Mary, she's pretty much, yeah, she's <laughs> um, Because of my area, it's a uh, museum hack, is uh, like they're revolutionizing um, interaction in museums, and it so is related to the pedagogy that I'm interested in. Um, when it comes to museums and local things and critiques, and I'm an art historian and I hate museums. So, this it's like really germane to my personal and professional interest in cross section. Um, for my own information and who I often tweet out to students, um, Colossal, it's a visual arts blog, and they sort of gather interesting contemporary art. And it actually is interesting contemporary art because often contemporary art is not something that people can understand by looking at it and they just find really amazing things and um, they blog it but then they also tweet it so you can go back to the blog and then on uh, artist campus brad mcdermott he uh, is an education ncpl and his tweets they 
they often are from the education department and then from himself, but the PD, some of that stuff is just like Mine will vary. So if I've been to a conference, <laughs> there's a really interesting speaker, mm -hmm. I'll follow them for at least a week or two until uh, the conference wears off and then someone else uh, catches my attention. So I think I'm I'm very much like what you see, I think that that uh, it's random. It's random. It's, I think what, whatever touches our interest, and we fly off on that. Uh, I noticed that with I have uh, Pinterest, I'm really gung gung ho on Pinterest lately. And, and I can see from the boards I've created that where my interests are lying and what, what touches my eye and what where, what I switch off to. Oh, that sounds interesting. I'd like to do that. And so, but I have to start following Mary. <laughs> <laughs> We didn't quite get around to the rest of you guys, but uh, so Julia, Charlene, Casey, do you guys use Twitter as well? If it is a student uh, at the school, we were actually um, usually finding common in class, so it's good to kind of see. And um, that's what I've been interested in. Um, it's been, I, I never, as for PD, I didn't push out for unless I had to for an assignment or an activity. So it's been a while since I've actually gone and do that. So if anything one I created Twitter accounts uh, probably like three years ago. And uh, whenever I go on there I'm like, oh this is so cool. Oh this is so awesome. But I'm too shy to do it. So I have to get over that, you know, because I think it is a really great opportunity. But I'm just always like, oh, what do I have to say is, you know, important or valuable or that kind of thing. So that's what's holding me back. That is fascinating because the Lockheed lecture on Monday talked about women and media and how women get asked less than men, but then when women are asked, they are less likely to say yes because they don't think that their voice has value. Interesting. So I think it's finding your voice. Like it's figuring out what am I passionate enough about that it doesn't matter if no one follows me. I still want to put it out there. Put it yeah. out there. And it's so not what my cup of tea. It took me a while to figure out. Okay, what, what do I what do I want? And then now that I'm semi-retired, I'm in that. Hmm, I need a, a new voice. I need to rethink what I want to put out there. So I've been fairly quiet. So I'll throw out to the panelists. So if someone was wanting to then be more active in Twitter or are new to Twitter and are jumping on the Twitter bandwagon, um, what would be a piece of advice you would give them? Well, it's just searching all the time, stop working, and join the conversation. And you can also go on Twitter. Oh, I was just going to do that to you and Julia. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> well, I think it's not what you may have said, like, be brave and, and do, you know, we get to even. You don't have to um, kind of add your own voice. The retweeting. Yeah. Do this a bit, and then maybe. A while later, you'll feel confident enough to put your own spin on it. Um, I would also suggest putting a picture, charting. Yes. <laughs> um, Get rid of you know, the not being the a, um, <laughs> Catch yourself with the full picture. Um, and, and have a real bio. So um, you should be putting your real name on there. Um, you are a professional and you should be you know, representing yourself professionally. So you should have a real name. Um, and I would encourage everyone to give a sense of what, to, so I can look at that and know what you might tweet about and why I might be interested in following you. Thank you. Any other and like, thoughts? And like different like to, yeah. I don't like that it's a heart now. I don't like that. Yeah. I, I that it. much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, a favorite. it's not a the star. The star was so, better. I like the star. But we could get into the, you know, the, the, the path of Star vs. Heart. Yes. It's Valentine's, so we'll go with that. <laughs> uh, just start following the people. Mm -hmm. 
I uh, took a course so I could learn how to do a typical sort of concrete sequential business person. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, one of the things that uh, she recommended was, uh, especially from a business perspective, or even, I think this works for everyone, is, is a set a time that you're going to post. Because otherwise, you know, a week can go by, or even you feel like you start off with good intentions. So you're posting, you know, several <coughs> times a day or several times a week, and it peters off. And, and so you're, you're, the first of all, what, what really caught mine is people started to follow me, and I was real jumpy. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I've got to say, really cool. So I said, oh, how many followers are watching that? Well, that person's got, how did they get that many people? And so it was, it was a little bit of that hooked on the getting people to follow me. But it was also set, set a, a schedule. Like if you're if you're going to do it just uh, just out of interest, then say you know every Friday at nine a.m. I'm going to put out something. You're a I'm a way more random tweeter than that. Yeah. Yeah. Some people are a bit more organic. In their <laughs> I find it's whenever I'm waiting, mm -hmm. oh. I just sit a couple minutes mm -hmm. and uh, subscribe it to. Uh, kind of newsletters that are just snippets. So it's already a synthesis of an article. And then I will retweet the synthesis of the synthesis to be even shorter. And I like to do that just kind of it comes through my mail feed. And you know usually there's about 10 articles and I'll look through and I'll retweet one of them. And that just it just kind of keeps me current on what's going on. And I would I would celebrate little moments too, like when you get your first follower, that's like a glass of wine. <laughs> your hundredth follower, well that's a whole bottle. And a thousand followers. Well, I wouldn't describe that. <laughs> but it is funny when people start yeah, following yeah. and you realize, well big now I've got hundred followers and then it just keeps growing. I up. am interested. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm not married, but oh. <laughs> um, I would add finding a way to filter out the noise. Uh, so I made a mistake when I first got Twitter, and it said followed a lot of people back. Mm. Um, lame. Don't follow people back unless you actually care about what they're saying. Yeah. Um, so now I use I follow hashtags. I use lists of like the real people I actually care about, so I don't mm -hmm. miss their tweets mm -hmm. in the sea of. People that I follow that I that I really think don't very much about what they have to say. Um, you can use tools like Hootsuite, Sprout Social, TweetDeck um, that can help you manage that. But filtering out the noise so you can actually see the tweets from the people like I want to see Anne Marie's tweets. I want to see Sona's tweets. Like those are people that I don't want to miss a thing, right? So they're on a special real people list. Okay. <laughs> 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 people will add you to this too, yeah. which is kind of yeah. what an honor. Yes. It's a good list. Yeah, my, some of the lists I've met is here don't have very good yeah, names. Yeah, it's like, so. you know, you know, real estate. And you, you can block people who, you, who are following you because, I mean, let's face it, there's people who want to sell business or products, so they'll find you and, and you look at their profile and they kind of have nothing you block. So just have to manage it. What about harassment on Twitter? Block. <laughs> yeah. Block and ignore? Oh. Block ignore. I rarely engage. Um, I used to. Uh, it's some nasty things. Oh. Being a woman that tweets about politics. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. Nasty yes. things get tweeted to me. And I used to really care. And I used to write them back. Ooh. And now just block. The, uh, yeah. I made the mistake of having a Twitter conversation with a, the editor of the Edmonton Journal once, <laughs> who is a very kind of traditional viewpoint on education and math particularly. So I just started throwing stuff up and down at him. And I would actually take pictures from books and attach it because he, he was arguing uh, methodology and how to teach math. And, don't know what you're talking about. So I would just I think I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's just okay, this is not getting any worse. And I just said, you're gonna have to agree to disagree, but thanks for the conversation, David. And I, mean, I still follow him and he follows me, but it was like, okay, this isn't this is not going anywhere. 
there. So I learned from that experience that we've done like things like that. Later. Yeah. <laughs> I call it Twitter bombing. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it gets dangerous. There's been a lot in news about Twitter harassment and police not really understanding it. Yeah. Well, other people get involved too. It's like, well, who are you? Yeah. 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 My conversation. Yeah. Yeah. But, right. Because uh, it's inherently it. public. Yeah. It is public. Yeah. So just to wrap up, if you, if the panelists could leave um, everyone with one piece of advice, their top piece of advice uh, in terms of using Twitter for research, networking, professional development, teaching in the classroom. We'll start with Beth this time. <laughs> Please do on the spot. Okay, so for personal, it would be to just stop, just try something out, but figure out ahead of time what, what you really want to talk about, what interests you. For the students, for assignments, because I think the whole intent of, I guess, is to figure out, first of all, when you're creating an assignment, is, is what do you want the students to come away with? I don't think I was as clear. I think I, I did want them to start using social media and seeing how people use in sales help them if they were a salesperson. It's an option class, so they're not all trained to be salespeople. But so what did I want them to come away with? And I don't I think I need to be clear about that. Great, thanks. Um, for me as a teacher of future teachers, uh, it's really important to me that I try to model effective instruction in this way of teaching practices. So that's really my purpose. This is another way to learn. So you know, just try it. Just you know, go go slow, go fast, and have fun. Get engaged with it. And you know, it, it's kind of like that discovery education. You know? Once you kind of get your foot in the pool and slash it out a little bit, you'll probably find that this is kind of fun and then you'll just get a little bit deeper and deeper as you go. So just kind of play with it and have fun. And and if you're interested, if you're on Twitter, I did tweet out an exit card, uh, traffic light exit card. So if you want to have fun, you can do that traffic light exit as you register. I think it's it's attached to the CTL hash now. No retweet. Or retweet. <laughs> um, I said this earlier, but uh, this is the most democratic way um, that we all have to build our brand. So take advantage of that. Uh, be interesting, be authentic, and just get started. Yeah, and I guess I'll just reiterate um, part what I already said as well is um, you know be yourself, post your picture. Um, complete your bio and and just dip your toe in and then like Brent says then you know wade in a little further and it's okay to get in there um, and also be respectful a lot of people forget um, that behind the social media there is a real person on the other end of the screen and, and I'm sure this hasn't happened in this room but we've all seen that other people on social media can take a very disrespectful tone um, and be very angry. Don't be the um, the pointing troll. Be respectful, like you would in conversation, face to face conversation. Um, I would say it is brand, but also be authentic in your branding of yourself. Um, and don't be discouraged if it doesn't seem like you're getting a lot of activity because I think as a group, there's a lot of lurkers. So just because someone isn't responding, um, that people aren't using it. And I know this for a fact because I've had students come through like, you were treating this picture and so how we were studying and it made me laugh. And I really got into studying after seeing this just this funny picture. But you would not have known that for looking at that either. So mm -hmm. realize that real people make your choices that are not doing well. That's okay. Awesome. That's a great point. Thank you very much to all of the panelists. And what we'll do is we will compile um, their top tips and everyone's Twitter handles, and we'll send it out to uh, everyone via email. <laughs> and on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for coming, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.